So in the first statistics module, we looked at uh, broad types of statistics, so descriptive and inferential. We discussed scales of measurement, um, but that sort of heads us back into this direction where we have this data set and we kind of want something out of it. And so that descriptive statistic that we want in this case is some sort of central tendency, some middle. And, and we often go for average, but it's important to understand what options we have in this regard. So if we think a little bit more systematically about central tenancy, we have the average, we have the median, which is the middle score, and we have the mode, which is the most common score. And whilst these seem pretty obvious and we've often covered these in school, I want to very briefly go through these so we understand a little bit more and, and where we might want to use them. So we'll start with the one that we all think that we know the best, which is the mean. Uh, and now, so mean, often people will talk about it's the to middle, middle of the scores, but it's calculated actually through the sum of all the scores divided by the number of the scores. So, so many of you would probably know that. But how does that actually work? We can see here we have a whole range of scores. We add them all up, we divide by the number, and in this case we get something like 5.42. So it's a really good measure of central tenancy in, in many cases because it takes into account all of the scores and it gives each score its own weight. Uh, it can be seen as the point where the total distance of the points above it equals the total distance of the points below it. So, so it can be a nice, neat measure. So the main advantage for using the mean is that it considers all the values and it's also the basis for many subsequent statistical analysis. So it sort of makes sense and especially when we start having descriptive data there and maybe then thinking about inferential statistics further on, there's, there's a real advantage to having the mean. However, there's a big disadvantage to having a mean um, and that's that sensitivity. So there are, when there are outliers, the mean can actually vary considerably and lead to misinterpretation of the data. And so we can see this in the following slide. If we demonstrate a set of scores that sort of run from um, pretty close to zero to around eight, and we can see them sort of evenly distributed here, um, and we'll talk about maybe distribution a little bit later down the track, we can see them kind of spread fairly evenly, and you, the, the mean there is around 3.84 in this particular set. So that, that sort of represents the middle ground pretty well. But if we have some data like this, which isn't isn't uncommon in research. We often have these outliers, and we've even got the break on the axis there, and you can see that this is the same data set as before, sort of ranging from close to zero to eight. But then there's just someone who's got a ridiculously high measure that's kind of completely different from everyone else. And that might be valid for any number of reasons, but it also starts to misrepresent what our middle score is in some way. So if I look at that whole data set, the mean represents sort of the, the middle in total value if you weight them all, but then that's almost an unproportional weighting towards that outlier. And so a mean of 6.26 is not a great representation for most of the data. So there starts to be a bit of an issue here. So this is examples of this are, say for example, um, outside of exercise science, a really big example is real estate. So whilst most houses sit in particular, a certain sort of range of prices, there are a, a very few houses around Australia, for example, that you know are, are $30 million, are $40 million. And so if we average all the houses over Australia, this actually ends up being quite a high average, say around the you know, million dollar mark or million and you know, 1.2 million or so. That's the average house price in Australia. But then if we say, what's the middle house price? What's the middle person and their house price? That's not really represented by this average anymore. So we might wanna to look to one of the other measures. And that other measure that is less sensitive um, to some of these outliers that we talked about with the mean is the median. And so you actually do see this used fairly commonly in research. The median is the middle score in the list of scores. If we line all the scores up, it's the one at the center. So it's it's an actual score. And you can see here, um, it, in this case, it's a four. So if the number of scores is even, the median falls between the two scores, but it's usually the highest number um, considered. So an advantage of the median is that it is it gives an actual value. So beyond just sensitivity uh, or to some of those outliers, it's good for ordinal data, um, but it's also not optimal in some considerations as well. So a major disadvantage of the median, for example, is that extremes have little impact. So that sensitivity or lack of sensitivity in this case to those outliers can sometimes be an advantage, sometimes a disadvantage. 
the mode, which is the last of the three central tendency measures, is the, occur is the score that occurs the most frequency, the, with the most frequency. So it's the ones that happens the most. So there's no complicated um, formulas, you just look at the data and the one that is most common, uh, so say for example in this data set here is the fours, so there's more fours than any other numbers and so the mode in this case is four. So in a simple distribution, mode is the highest frequency. Uh, in a group distribution, it's the middle point of the highest frequency. So there are advantages of using the mode. It's very easy to calculate. It's a very quick uh, estimate of central tendency. So if there's a uh, normal distribution, which again we'll talk about later, but this is most data sets are sort of somewhat normally distributed and we tend to see the most common number be somewhere around the middle. The disadvantages are that it can depend changing on the way we group the values. It doesn't give us anything that we can use for further analysis and it doesn't take into account the extremes. So in conclusion, for central tendency measures, if we get that data set like we had at the start and we want to know, okay, what's the middle scores that represent a set of data? You use the mode if you only need a rough estimate of central tendency uh, and the distribution is close to normal. You use the median if the data is ordinal uh, or if you need a middle score or if the data is heavily affected by outliers. And finally, you use the mean in all other cases. So and also, sorry, if other statistical calculations are necessary. So we want to go a little further, then the mean is a really good one to use.